right. Well, today we are going to honor Charles Phillips. I don't know if can everybody see him up there. Does everybody remember Charlie? And um, he was a man who attended and actually was a member here at the church. And he was born on May 29th, 1952, but he passed away on September 19th of this year. And because of all of the COVID restrictions, we decided to do his memorial, um, take some time in our ser Sunday service. Since everybody would be here and we, you know, we can gather for that. I know a lot of the funeral homes are only allowing a short number of people and shorter services. So we wanted to take a few minutes to remember Charlie. He had surgery at one point, and so my husband Todd and I were able to go to his house and um, visit with him at home and meet his sister. And Charlie just had a wonderful attitude about him. He was always happy. That's the one thing. Um, he was excited to meet you, to talk to you, and he had a giving heart. So you can see up here we have some plaques that Charlie had painted for Ashley and Roland. And what was interesting is I'm pretty sure Charlie was a U of M fan because I saw him and his blue and yellow. But he was not spiteful because of that. He knew that they were a house divided and that Ashley had gone to state and was a state fan. So he not only made um, Roland a plaque, but he made Ashley a plaque. He was not just someone who said, I want to support my team and do that but he had a heart to create and to make things for other people as well. So you can see here, Todd has a purple guitar he plays. Charlie had made him a purple cross. And so Todd keeps this on his guitar bag. He also had heard from some of you that I have a cross wall in my house. Um, and I, it's, it's not all the same crosses, they're different crosses. And whenever I go on a trip or if I have a birthday or you know somebody will give me a gift. And so I look up there, I'll be like, oh, that one's from this person. And, that one's from this trip, and so he made me a cross for my cross wall. So I have Charlie's cross on my cross wall at home. I didn't want to take it down to come here because it's a big wall, and sometimes I need ladders to get to all the crosses. But I, when I look up there, I can see the cross from Charlie. And what's interesting is sometimes, you know, he would make something for me, and I would think, like, okay, what am I going to do with this? And then God knew. Like, he had made me this little box one time. It had my name on it. And I was like, thank you, Charlie. And I was trying to think of, like, you know, what am I going to use this little box for? And I had it sitting on my desk, and all of a sudden, um, I was putting together some children's ministries, and I had to go to the store, and I bought all these different thumb drives, and I didn't want to get them mixed up with this other thumb drive that was really important. And I realized, like, this is the perfect size. It fits right here in this drawer. And so I put my one special thumb drive in this little box, and so now every time when I'm doing things, I have to grab that out. I think of Charlie. And what I thought was really interesting about Charlie and his attitude is that he wanted to give to others. He didn't get anything in return for it. He never handed me something and said, oh, this cost me $10 to make Mary, right? He did it from a giving heart. And that's what being a Christian and being Christ-like is like, right? You give and you love somebody not for what you get in return, but because it's in your heart to love them. If I had to guess, I would say that Charlie's love language was, you know, acts of service or gift giving because he was always doing these things out of an act of service. And he wouldn't just give you whatever. He would say, what is your favorite color? You know, he wanted to know, what is your favorite sports team? He wanted to know what it was that, that you enjoyed. I know Pastor Melissa is wearing one of his face masks today that he had went because he knew that their family, of course, were U of M fans, and he loved that. So he would go to the store, and when, when all of a sudden now we had to have masks, he was making sure that the people he loved had the masks. But not just any old mask, the mask of their favorite team. And so what I'd like to do right now, and I know not all of you knew Charlie, but those of you who did know Charlie, that ever received a gift from him, that he ever made you smile, that you ever had a wonderful conversation with him, to please come up and light a candle in honor of our church member who is gone, but we know is in heaven because he loved the Lord. So please come up and light a candle. There were so many of us that he touched through his acts of giving.
And I know this is just a fraction of the people he touched because I know a lot of our loved ones are still watching services from home. to read to you, I know it's a cliche passage, but I'm going to talk about it for a minute. In many funerals when we go or memorials, we, we go to Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Many times we think about that darkest valley as the valley that you go through when you're dying. And that, you know, on the other side you go to heaven. But I personally think that it's the loved ones that go through that darkest valley when someone they love has died. And it's that grief we go through because we know that we'll miss them. And the reality is that a valley, by the definition of valley, you know, it keeps on going. There is, there is another side to that, right? You walk through the valley and then you come out to the other side. And we are going to miss Charlie so very much. But in the end, we can rejoice because we know that this earth is not the end. That there is something beyond death, right? We, we talk about this all the time. We're body, soul, and spirit. Our bodies will eventually perish. But our spirit, our soul, our souls go on to heaven or hell, right? The choice is ours. It says, all who believe in the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say, all those who stop sinning shall be saved. It says, all those who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. So, during this time of his body physically not being with us anymore, it is, it is sad. We're going to miss him. We, you know, we, we have all these fun stories about Charlie, right? There's the good, the good times and the times he made us laugh and the, and the great conversations and the times we could go and visit him. And, and we know, though, that we do not need to be sad for where he is today because he knew the Lord. We're going to just be sad for the times that he's not with us. I, I should have asked you this beforehand, but is there anyone that would like to say a few words? I know it's hard when I kind of spur it on, but I just wanted to make sure we give that opportunity. I wanted to give you all that opportunity to come up and light the candles, to remember all the different things that he, he made for us. And what was really interesting as I thought about this, I thought, Charlie will always be a part of this place. He will always be a part of my home. He will always be with me in my office. He will always be with Todd every time he grabs his guitar bag and plays. Why? Because Charlie left a lasting impact on us, and he left us a legacy through his gifts. And so my hope for you today is to ask yourself, what is my legacy upon the world? Even though I know I'm going to go to heaven when I die, what am I going to leave my friends what am I going to leave my family to remember me by? And again, his love language was that the um, gifts, right, and, and the acts of service of doing those things. And all of us are different, right? For some of us, it's our words of encouragement. I still have some letters and cards that my mother wrote to me. And, and I still remember the times when my father, when he passed away when I was 11, but when I would get to sit in his lap and, and I would get to cuddle with him when, when the storms were bad outside, right? So each one of us loves our family members in a different way, and we leave them something different. 
But Charlie left a legacy for all of us. And when we see those things, we'll remember the man who not only loved the Lord, but he loved us. And so he left something for us. So my, it's not a challenge, but my hope for all of you, right, is that when you see your loved ones this week, that you love them well. And that you leave some sort of legacy, whether it's some words of encouragement, whether it's the way you made people feel when you walked into the room, whether it was that gift, that act of service, whatever it might be, that you will be inspired because of Charlie leaving his legacy on us, that you will leave your legacy on the world as well. Does that sound good? Let's pray for Charlie and his family. Father God, we thank you so much for Charlie and his life and his impact upon this church, upon this community, upon his friends, his family. We thank you for his life. We thank you for how it impacted us. We thank you for the gifts and the legacy that he left us here on earth. We thank you that he is with you in heaven. We just ask you just to remind him of how much we've missed him and how much we appreciated his life and loved him. And we ask you, Father God, to let him be an inspiration to all of us, not only to know you and to know that we're going to heaven when we die and to have that reassurance, but to also leave a legacy to those around us, whether it be in how we treat them, how we love them, how we, how we speak to them, how we give them the gifts or the acts of service or the words of encouragement. But you show us, Father God, our gifts and our talents and how we can love those around us and leave that legacy behind us. And may it point them back to you through our love. We honor you and we thank you for Charlie. We ask you to be with his family as they are grieving the loss of his life with them here on earth. But comfort them, Father God, to know that he is in heaven and that we can join him one day. May we all know you and accept you as our Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all. Um, I was so always... I was honestly, I was surprised when he went because it wasn't like he was in the hospital and he was, you know, struggling with something. It was something that was unexpected. And so when I heard the news, I thought, no one knows the day and hour. We don't know. And it really made me wonder, like, are we ready? Right? And so as we continue with this series that we've been doing, it's been called to love. 